Hello everyone and welcome to the Wednesday class. It's great to see you back on the chat again. Say so I've got Kat with me this week on the on the chat. And it's going to be as as we're in the beginning in the middle of the wood element cycle, it's going to be the special feature today is Kat's kitchen. I hope you so like it. Got that all um We've got all that ready for you. So we're not going to have a point of the week this week. We're going to have Cat's Kitchen instead. So, okay, great. It's lovely to see some familiar faces or familiar names in the chat. So let's get straight on this. Believe it or not, I think this is our 49th Wednesday class. We're coming up for our first anniversary. So think about that. In a few weeks, we'll be, we will have supported you for a whole year through the pandemic. Can you believe it? I can't believe that year has just gone like that. And uh, yeah, we've got now we've got 900 people signed up for the Wednesday class. Not everyone makes the live event, obviously, but uh, we should get over 100 people um, live, as you know. Um, so that's an amazing, uh, an amazing group we've got there and a lot of people watch the recording. So there we are a few more. and We'll have we'll get up to 1000 people um, worldwide tuning in every Wednesday. OK, so it's great to see you all from all over the world again. Germany, Belgium, America, whoa, Suffolk, Heidelberg and lots from England too. Okay, I'm going to put the slides up. Okay, I'm going to do the normal routine, see how you are. We're going to do some tuning in, do some polls, find out how you as a group are changing. We've seen some dramatic shifts in your energy in the last year, and we've kind of tried to weave with you and work, our, work the exercises just for you. So we'll find out where we're at. I can't wait to see what's happening. Um, there's no point of the week. We're going to have Cat's Kitchen, and I'll just show you the um, program if I can find it. No, okay, we're in the wood element, and we've, we're now halfway through the wood element. We've been through the water element, and we're like halfway through the wood now, um, which is why we're featuring Cat's Kitchen. So, can you believe it? That's incredible. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, but this is the program and we're now here the 3rd of March. You can see that we're in week 15 of our year cycle and we've got Cat's Kitchen. And then next week we're going to start on our journey down the gallbladder channel. So that's going to be exciting for the last uh, four weeks. One, two, three, four, five weeks of this cycle. We're going to go down the entire gallbladder channel. So we've done all the way up the kidney channel, down the bladder channel. We've been up the liver channel, and so the next series will be going down the gallbladder channel. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Just the kind of thing we did, we needed. Last week, we looked at liver 13. Remember that? Um, so that was the end of the liver channel. Cool. Okay, so let's do some tuning in, and we'll find out where we're all at uh, on this Wednesday. Okay, so let's do a whole body scan first of all find out how our overall energy is, and then we'll tune into the burners and we'll see what's happening with the burners. Okay, so if you'd like to do this, you can do this sitting down, but I quite like doing it standing up. I've got my piece of paper and my pen ready. And we're just gonna relax. And we're gonna tune in by scanning through our whole body, starting off with the top of the head. We're going through our head through the jaw, through the throat, and then down through the chest area, through the shoulders, down through our arms. Then we're gonna go scan through the torso, through the back, all the way down, just noticing if you can see any obstructions or any weakness as you go down. Okay, down through the hips, down through the knees, ankles, and into the feet. Okay, just take a moment and just tune into our whole energy. Just see if there's anywhere where we're holding, anywhere where there's too much activity, maybe too much obstruction or maybe weakness. And then just, we're going to just tune into that. Imagine you can draw that and let's just draw a picture of our energy. Just a few key things that we'd like to work on. And then as we go through the exercises, then we can focus the exercises in on those particular things. So I'm just going to do a quick sketch. And if you come every week, it's quite good to look back sometimes and see how things have changed as well. So I've got a few things going on myself. I'm just going to draw them. OK, 
Okay, so we've got an overall whole scan. And that's what my scan looks like this week. You can see I really do need, I really do need the Wednesday class today, um, just for myself, but I'm glad to be able to share it with you. Okay, excellent. So now it's time for the burners. And this has seen some dramatic shifts over the last year. We've seen some very dramatic shifts and we've had to change some of the exercises uh, along with those. Um, so what you need to do now is uh, just draw three boxes by doing three lines there. And we're gonna go the lower, middle and the upper burner. Okay, so I'm gonna do it standing up today just for a change. First of all, let's tune into our lower burner. That's this area here. Um, it's uh, traditionally connected with the kidney energy in Chinese medicine. It also has some embryological connections with the adrenal system. Um, and it forms the foundation of the three burning spaces or the three uh, burning areas, three burning areas. Okay, so let's just tune into this area first of all. We're gonna place my hands here today and I'm thinking through into the lower back Okay, and I'm just tuning in, I'm gonna close my eyes for a second. And I'm just asking myself, what is it like? What is that lower burner like? Okay, got it. Now, if you had to turn it into an image, what would it look like? And I'm gonna do that now, draw in my lower burner. It's a bit different from last week, actually. I don't know about you, but it's definitely changed a bit since last week. Okay, now according to Chinese medicine, that should feel kind of calm, quite solid feeling. It wants to be quite solid and kind of calm. That's like the root of the three burners. Now we go up to the middle burner. We've had some exciting resurgences of the middle burner over the last year. Last couple of weeks, it's been, or last few weeks, the um, lower and the upper burner have been taking over the middle burner, but we'll just see what happens today. So the middle burner is from the uh, diaphragm down to the navel, so it encompasses the liver and the stomach, and it also encompasses some reflex points on the lower thoracic spine. So it's this whole area here. Um, if you get any tension in the diaphragm, that's usually connected to uh, the middle burner, um, again, because of embryological connection. So let's just close our eyes, focus in. I'm gonna place my hand over the middle burner now, and I'm tuning in, I'm scanning into that space. Very interesting. Okay, very good. So we're gonna draw that. Now again, according to Chinese medicine, the um, ideal and Qigong, the ideal for the middle burner is kind of a smooth, open, relaxed space. You don't want too much heat there and you don't want too much congestion there. Okay, so uh, let's see how we're doing on our middle burners. Okay, very good. And now, finally, we have the upper burner, which is the lungs and the heart. Um, and obviously the heart's closely related to the emotional center of the body. So it's not surprising we've had quite a lot of upper burner issues as we've gone on through this last year. So let's check into our upper burner and see how we're doing. Again, I'm just gonna relax, I'm closing my eyes. I'm gonna place my hands just over the uh, sternum here and just tune in with my hands. And I'm thinking in deep into the thoracic spine and the upper, the whole upper heater. Okay, now again, in according to Chinese medicine, this should be an open, kind of moist, cool space, quite spacious. They say it should be like a mist. And what you're not, what you want to look for there is a kind of cool, open feeling. If you've got any hardness or feelings of tightness, that's not ideal and certainly you don't really want any heat there again it wants to be nice and cool and open okay look at this definitely has been a change um, for me anyway over the last couple of weeks so okay here we are now it's the big moment of the week to find out which um oh hyde's got a question look at we can mark that up if you want to mark that cup Mark that up, we can answer that later. Okay, 
I can I answer that right away, actually, if you like. I'm going to flip, put that up straight up. Um, OK, Heidi's confused about the three burners. This, you're, you're confusing the burners with the dantians. The dantians are the energy centers of the body, and there are three of those. There's this one, which corresponds to the lower burner. There's the second dantian, which corresponds to the um, heart and the upper burner. Um, and you've got the, the third eye dantian, the upper dantian. So basically you've got physical, emotional, and chi, and mental and spiritual levels. They're the three dantians. The burners are different because they are not... <laughs> No, they don't involve the head. They only involve the body and they're to do with the production of ki. Um, and that's why we started off using them uh, way back in the beginning of coronavirus, because what we wanted to do is increase your immunity and keep you kind of calm through the whole thing. OK, so that's what it is. Yep, you've got it. <laughs> OK, so there we are. Great. If there are any other questions and I get in before cat, <laughs> I'll try and answer them. Okay, so now it's a big moment. Let's find out. Um, let's find out which burner we want to work on today. I'm just going to find out which burner do you want to work on most today. Let's find out that. And let's see how it's changed. Okay, I'd just like to vote. We've got 71% of everyone voting. Whoa, okay, now look what's happened. The upper and the middle burner are starting to pull away from the lower burner. Now, last week we had a, a, quite a low level of votes for middle burner, which is mainly upper and lower. And actually, that's quite encouraging, really. But as long as we can get that upper burner, um, upper burner is usually related to emotional fatigue, things like that, anxiety. Um, it's related to the heart and the lungs, and also it can be related to grief as well. So we'll do a special on the upper burner today. We need to work on the lower burner, obviously, as well. Okay, so bearing that in mind, um, I'd like to also just ask you um, to just figure out, just kind of um, let us know what you're doing in terms of the zones, you know, the nervous system zones, um, because this also can help us with the breathing particularly. Okay, now we also, the last few months, we've had a little bit of an increase in those of you in the blue and the red zones, and that's something we want to really sort out because it's not a nice place to be. So why don't you let us know whether you feel in the green zone, generally feeling um, socially engaged, whether you feel like you're under stress, fight or flight, or whether you're tending to get kind of numb and depressed as the dorsal vagal system starts to work um, to, work to protect you. Um, now, you might find a combination, and I'll just read it out. So if I just share this with you now, either if you think you're in the green zone, the red zone, the blue zone, or you might be in the green and the red zone, you're going in between the green and red zone. And also you may be going between the red and the blue zone. And, and those of you that are experiencing that, they're the ones we really need to help because we need to get you to deactivate your nervous system so that you can feel more joy in your life as you go on from day to day. OK, and we've got like a couple of people who are right in the blue zone. And again, we really need to look after you. If you need one to one help, please get in touch with us. Get in touch with Shakura. Get some online or some face to face help um, if you do feel that that's happening to you. OK, here we go. But we have got an encouraging 16 percent of you nicely in the green zone. So well done for those people. And let's look after the rest of you and get you nice and chilled out back down into the green zone there. OK. If you're in the green and red zone, it's not too bad because you don't get back down into that green zone. OK, so we need to leave some time for Cat's Kitchen, so we better get on with the um, exercises today. So I'm just going to close this up. OK, and let's make sure that we get that upper burner nice and uh, released today. OK, so what we're going to do first of all today is we're going to do a bit of shaking because if you're feeling a lot of pressure up here, maybe um, some pressure or some uh, blockages in the upper burner, we're going to do some breathing and we're going to shake those, that tension out from the upper body. Okay, we'll do that, then we'll go down and build up from the lower burner. Are you ready? Okay, so here we go. We're going to just start off just with the upper body here. I've got my uh, shoulders, my jaw, throat area. Relaxing and just shaking us down. Okay, 
Now, if you tell you to go into the blue zone, I would recommend you do this every day. Get up, do some shaking, and keep the breathing going, because the breathing will activate um, the nervous system and help you go down, back through the red and into the um, green zone. There's a tendency to feel kind of like this when you're in the blue zone, kind of locked down. Breathing gets very shallow, and the whole body kind of goes like this. Okay, so give it a good shake every morning, getting plenty of air into the lungs, and don't worry about the slow exhalation if you're in the blue zone. Keep that breathing going, and emphasize the in-breath because the in-breath activates um, the uh, sympathetic nervous system, and it will tend to just let you get you from the uh, blue zone back down through the red and into the green. Okay. We're going to do a really good nice shake, and we're going to go down into the hips. And then right down into the feet. Okay, I'm feeling better already. We're just going to keep going until we get nicely loosened up, get plenty of air. Okay, very good. Okay, so now we're going to do a surprising thing, considering the upper burner one today. Perhaps it's surprising, perhaps not. We're going to work on the feet first, and I'll explain why as we go along. Okay, now the uh, kidney channel has a really strong connection both with the lungs and with the heart, both the upper burner channels. So let's get do a really good job um, of opening up the kidney energy, and I'll just uh, do that with you, and then we'll have a look and see how energy's changed. So first of all, we're just going to open up the feet like this. You could do this in a sitting position if you've got a sitting on a chair. We're going to open up this area here. And this also goes with the Prince of Chinese medicine principle of the problems in the above you treat below. So let's get our engine, our kidney one really activated. And then stretching. And tapping, opening them up. So we've got a strong connection between the kidney channel and the heart. Basically, if we strengthen the lower burner, it can calm the heart because that's a relationship between the Zi and the Shen, um, which we'll get through to later on in the year as we go through the cycle. Um, there's also a really strong connection between the kidney energy and the lungs because the kidney energy kind of anchors the breathing down into the lower part of the body. So we really need to get this kidney channel activated and also, if you remember, kidney one, um, bubbling spring point, is the main point in the body that's used to calm the mind. It increases the yin of the body, which is the calm, chilled out, cool energy of the body, which is, we all need plenty of that right at the moment. So let's just make sure we energize this point and get plenty of that yin energy up through the entire body. So I'm tapping away at kidney one. And then I'm just opening up my whole foot like this. And I'm digging right into kidney one with my fingertips here like this. It's a great technique for opening up the feet. Okay, so if you voted for the upper burner, what I'd be interested to see is um, what happens when we stand up. So we stand up and we focus our energy down through kidney one into the earth. That should go a long way to starting to calm and open up the upper burner, okay? 
If you only have to do one thing in the day and you find that you're getting maybe a little bit panicky in the upper burner or maybe a bit constricted here, before you work on this, I really recommend that you just spend like maybe five minutes just working on your feet, get someone else to do it if you're bubbled with someone. Um, and you'll probably be very surprised at how effective working completely the other end of the body is. This is the sort of thing we do all the time when we're doing shiatsu. Um, work distal points, points away from the area um, that we've got the issue with. Okay, great. Well, that feels a lot more alive. So now let's stand up, just check in with how we're feeling. There we go. Okay, now let's just try that. I'm going to shake the legs out. We're going to stand again. Now, first of all, focus in on how your feet feel connected to the earth, and we're just going to bring our attention right down to there. And then keeping your attention there, just work your awareness up into the middle and the upper burner. And I think you'll find that the whole upper burner feels more like this. Then, okay? And that's the power of kidney one. Fantastic place to start. So now let's work on the lower dantian. It should be quite easy now because we've opened up the kidney channel. Just do a little bit of tapping. So I'm gonna go down and tap behind the ankles. And then tap up the inside the legs and then down the backs of the legs. Okay, why are we doing this? We're doing this to open up the kidney and the bladder channels to connect the lower heater with the earth. Okay. So the strength of the lower heater directly affects releasing the middle burner and the upper burner. Okay, so let's get that one. Okay, good. Right, so now let's try the lower abdominal breathing and activating the lower dantian, okay? The lower dantian is related to the lower burner, so we're right in the lower area here. Hands, rubbing the hands together. Placing one hand over just below the navel, and we're going to just do small rotations to activate the conception vessel four and six points, which is the gate of life points. Okay, and again, this is all to do with relaxing the upper middle burners, bringing the breath down into the lower dantian. Okay, now your legs should feel like mine, I guess, like really kind of activated, really nicely solidly on the floor. It's a really nice feeling, and we can relax the upper burner. Relax the middle burner, and we're just circling around. Okay, well done. Keep that breathing nice and relaxed. Now let's focus the breathing down to the lower down chin. We're going to breathe in. Imagine energy or light coming down with the breath, down into the lower burner. Try and fill it out right into the lower back as well. So you're bringing the breath into the lower back. And we're breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. And breathing out. Okay, now keep that breathing and we're going to just activate bladder 23. That's the U point or the associated effect point for the kidneys. So I'm doing that with this movement here. Now keeping those legs really nice and open. Okay, we're keeping the, rec the kidney one point open, keeping it really connected down into the earth. There we go, very good. Excellent. Opening up the sacrum. This is where the kidney channel and the bladder channel run on the lower back in the sacrum. We're just rubbing them there. Excellent. Okay. Okay, now check in again with those up the upper burner. Can you feel how it's just so much more relaxed now? It's kind of rooting down there into the lower burner. It's really important energy movement there. Okay, now middle burner's taking a bit of a back seat this week, but we still need to keep this as free as we can. Those of you who voted for the middle burner, 
The idea for this is to get this area released. Often frustration um, and anxiety can affect the stomach and the liver and it can block this whole area here. We don't like that, okay? So let's do something about it. First thing we wanna do is this twisting exercise. So let's get that head floating up. Okay, now we can float now because the lower part of our body is nicely connected to the earth. Can you feel that kidney one? That was such a good idea to do that early on today. Okay, and now we can just live really just, now what I'm doing here is I'm turning like this, but my attention is on opening up this area here and really relaxing the diaphragm and the middle burner here. This whole middle burner. Okay, very good. Excellent. Okay, now just feel what the middle burner feels like. Just experience that twist. And now what we'll do is we'll work down. Remember this? Gate of Hope exercise. Wasn't that fun? We did that last week, didn't we? Liver 13 to liver 14. It's this movement here from the floating rib to just below the nipple here, just in front of the ribs. This arc here is a connection between liver 13 and 14. And that's an acupuncture combination, this point combination, that's used to give hope. <laughs> we need plenty of that right now. So let's really do that now, go up here. That's a really good way of, again, releasing the lower burner. You notice it connects up the diaphragm right through into um, the overlap between the middle and the upper burner. This is the gate of hope movement, everyone. Do this, and then once we've activated that, we can just work the size of the body, that's called a channel, so stick here, and we can go down, and let's just do a circuit around the liver and the gallbladder, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down the gallbladder channel, and the size of the body, the size of the legs, up to the inside of the legs. Down the outside, up the inside, okay, and now we're going to go straight down to the stump channel, so this is along here, it's the other middle burner channel, so we go down here, down the outside of the legs, down the stump channel. work for all the yang channels of the, the yang and the yin channels of the leg now okay now check this out okay now just swing again just see if that feels any easier okay if you're a middle burner voter and you want to do something during the week before next wednesday then you could do the feet pretty one and then twisting and then work down the gallbladder, the liver, and the stomach, and the spleen, just like we've done. And that will really help. We do that every day. That will really help keep this open um, and keep the digestion flowing. Okay, fantastic. Now, if we just stand for a second, just remember how you felt just like half an hour ago, 20 minutes ago, and just tune in. I'd like you to just tune into the upper burner. Now, you'll find that already, especially if you concentrate on your feet, the upper burner is already starting to feel a lot calmer and a lot more integrated into the body. Usually when you have upper burner issues, you either get this movement, okay, or this, like a contraction here, or you get this kind of panicky feeling where you're kind of going like this. Root into kidney one, everyone, okay, get that attention down into the kidney one, and naturally the upper burner just opens into a comfortable place, and it's all kind of nice and really, really calm, okay? So now we can just work on consolidating that, do some work on the yang chant and we'll be done. 
Okay, so let's do some stretches for the upper burner. We're going to do the lung stretch first of all. We're breathing in, breathing out, and stretching back, opening up the lungs. Ready? Breathing in, stretching up towards the thumb, breathing in, and breathing out. Very good, so that's the lung stretch. Now this is the pericardial stretch. We're breathing in, we're breathing out. Stretching towards the middle finger this time. That's very good. Keep that chest really relaxed as you breathe out. Breathing in. Breathing out, nice slow exhalation, calming the whole of the chest area there. Well done, okay. Breathing in, breathing out. Okay, great. And then finally the heart stretch is the third yin channel that goes into the chest. This is one of my favorites, um, making a prayer position, breathing in, we want to open up the armpit, so it's like this, so you're not constricting here, open the armpit, and you're pressing your fingertips back towards the wall behind you on the exhalation, right? So nice and easy, breathing in and breathing out, stretching back, breathing in. Breathing out, stretching back, breathing in, breathing out, and stretching back. Okay, cool. Okay, very good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do some work on the um, yin channels of the arm. Okay, so we've got three yin channels of the arm. We've got the lung pericardium and the heart, okay? So we're gonna do them all together today and we're gonna take a whole broad feeling of like opening all the way down here, okay? So we're gonna tap around here. This is all the, the area of the heart and the lungs. And let's just do the whole of the inside of the arm. I'm gonna use the flat of my hand. I'm gonna go down, recovering all the channels. This is again something that we can do in the week really easily. I'm going to go down three times, right onto the whole hand. Do a bit of a close up here. So we're going to go down the whole flat of the inside of the arms. So that's all the yin channels of the arm. That'd be a nice opening feeling. So let's do it on the other side as well. Okay, so we've got three yin channels all the way down the inside of the arm here. And I'm covering them all just like this. We'll do them all at once. Down into the hand. brushing off. Okay, let's see what that feels like. Okay, let's just try the perigonium stretch and see if that feels any easier. Breathing in, breathing out. Oh, tingly. Doesn't that feel tingly down the inside of the arms? I'm more open here. Okay, the reason for that is because all of these connective tissue facial pathways go into here, into the heart and into the lungs. So we're opening this area up and it gives us a feeling of being much more positive. Okay, let's do some, uh, let's do some work on our hands and we're going to um, work some very important points on the hands. We're going to do them in a special way, rather than just pressing on the on the uh, hand itself. Let's activate the channel using our imagination. Okay, so I'm going to be standing 
feet shoulder width apart. I'm keep, keeping that kidney one activated. That will provide a foundation for the lower burners. And then I'm going to work points on the hand, but rather than focusing on the hand, I'm focusing all the way up the arm into the upper heater. Do you want to try it? So let's try this one first. This is pericardium eight. We've talked about this before. This is palace of anxiety. It's one of the major points used for treating anxiety. And if you gently press in here, it's just between the first and second bones here that come down into the hand. So it's just slightly off from the center point of the palm, just right there. Now, if we just relax this, though, to tune in and see if you get sensation up this arm. Okay, if you can get sensation up the arm, you may be able to feel it into the elbow. Be really relaxed and open up. You may get it all the way into the chest, just a subtle feeling of connection into the chest. Now, if we, if we combine that with nice, easy um, breathing, <clears throat> this is how the points work, by connecting through the meridian system. We keep you really relaxed. As we breathe out, I'm just going to put a little bit more pressure on here. Now, if you can feel that, if you can feel a connection all the way up here into the chest area, that means you've felt the activation of the point. If you've ever had acupuncture, you'll notice that when they put the needle in, they twiddle it around until you get that feeling of connection up the, um, uh, up the channel. Okay, but this is more of an internal feeling all the way up and into the chest. Okay, excellent. And if you can't feel it, don't worry about it. Just keep relaxing and imagining it. And sooner or later, it's going to start opening up the channel. So we're going to go for the other, ha other hand now. Got it nice and relaxed. Now this time I'm relaxing this arm. I'm opening up this arm, relaxing it as much as I can, trying to get this feeling of connection all the way up through the, the arm. Okay, I'm going to do it with a breathing. Remember, now I'm still connecting with kidney one in the foot, keeping it all open. Nice, easy breaths. As I'm breathing out, gently pressing in here, feeling the connection all the way up as far as I can into the chest. So let's just do three breaths, breathing in. Very good, okay, keeping the arms really relaxed, keep that kidney one on the ground, breathing in, breathing out, relaxing the upper heater, feeling the connection with the point internally. Very good. And then one more. Okay, excellent. Okay, you want to try something else? Let's just check here, breathing in, breathing out. Can you feel that point still humming away? Sometimes you can feel the sensation of the point and the opening of the channel after you finish pressing it. That's because you've activated the connection. Can you feel that? It's more open and I can still feel this tingling away in my palm. Okay, great. So we better just work on our yang channels so we've got time for Cat's Kitchen wood element. <laughs> Okay, so we've done a really good job. Well done of getting the three burners activated. We've done a lot of work on the yin channels. That's going to keep us really calm and kind of centered. Um, so now what we need to do is just check those yang channels. They're the ones where we often hold tension in the body. And the favorite place for that is the head and neck. So let's do some work on that. We're going to work just along the forehead, just opening it up. We're going to work around the eyes, and this is special, special for the wood element because the wood element is low, um, connected directly with the eyes. So we're going to work around the eyes, just gently pressing around the edges of the orbit of the eye here. And you can actually press along the top of the eyes as well, just gently pressing in, assuming you've not got contact lenses in. There we go. Okay, the sides of the body, uh, sides of the head, sorry, the sides of the head. Squeezing in and then working down. Got some stump points here. The sinuses are good to just squeeze. I like to do this by squeezing the upper sinuses like this. 
and my thumb is underneath here. That's a point stomach three. It's a really good combination of points. Ideal for clearing out the sinuses. <clears throat> And then we go here, upper jaw, uh, upper teeth, the root of the teeth here, all the way around, pressing in, relaxing the jaw, okay, and around here. Very good. Okay, putting the ears. Just three times around, just giving a bit of a pull, keeping the jaw relaxed. Okay, so now let's do a really good job on working the neck. We've got the stomach channel right down the front of the neck here. So I'm gonna just put, put my knuckles in here and just squeeze the SCM muscle, the sternocleidomastoid muscle. That's this big muscle here that holds up the head and controls the head. Something that gets very stiff sometimes and you can hold a lot of tension there around the throat. So I'm just pressing in around here. And also the vagal nerve runs right down below these muscles right down in here. So that's a good idea to, again to keep that nice and open. Okay, very good. So now it's time to work on the uh, sides of the neck. So I'm going to work here to show you I can do a side view. I'm working along here, this part, both sides. Using the heels of my hand. If that's uncomfortable for you, you can use your fingertips like this. Works pretty well too. And there's a, we're going to find out soon in a few weeks about this point here. Really important point on the gallbladder channel. It's great for the eye strain and all kinds of things. Um, we can press it like this. and pressing up towards the opposite eye to get the real effect of it. And we're going to be doing more on that point very, very soon. And then we go to the bladder channel. Remember this one, the celestial pillar point. Remember that was one of our favorite points on the bladder channel. It's a fantastic point for opening up the whole back and neck. It's very important for connecting the head and the rest of the body. So we just gently press in there. You probably feel working all the way down your spine. And squeezing down. That's bladder 10 celestial pillar. Ah, great. Okay, brilliant. So that's the head and neck. Just do a little bit of tapping on the shoulders and shake out any excess yang energy that we've got in the upper body. Brushing down. And then finally, the only bit we haven't done is the back. So I'm going to go down as far as I can. If you've got someone you're working with, that'd be great. You can do this on each other. Otherwise, if you're like me and you're on your own, you can tap down as far as you can. And then pick it up here. See how far up you can stretch. And down we go. Shake. Okay, checking in time. Okay, let's just see how we are to standing. Checking our overall energy. Remember the scan we did at the beginning? Tuning into the lower heater. middle heater <clears throat> and the upper heater and what we're looking for is more integration all the way through the body this should feel nice and solid connected down into the earth this wants to be nice and relaxed and this area wants to be nice and open and calm okay great so now it's time for cat's kitchen okay so let's uh, i'm going to run the video it's about 10 minutes long it's completely self-produced this month. Kat did it entirely on her own. Um, so 
let's see what she's got in store for us um, for the spring. And this is the spring wood element um, cat's kitchen. Okay, so here we go. It might take a little while for the video to <coughs> to um, you know to activate on your on your uh, system, but we should be fine. I'm going to set it off now. Let's go. Hello and welcome to my kitchen again, Cat's Kitchen. This time it's the spring season where I'll be showing you not one but two quick recipes. So in Chinese medicine, the spring season chimes with the wood element, which is a time of growth, up and outward movement of energy. Just looking out at the garden and all these new bits of plants sprouting and bursting out the ground. It's also a time of new beginnings, rebirth, flexibility, and the ability to make decisions. And the two um, meridians that are associated is the liver and the gallbladder. So let's get creative and make two delicious and very easy dishes. So the first will be a green smoothie or a superfood drink. And the second is some energy balls. Just what we need at this time of year. And both of these tasty treats, you can eat them as a snack or have them as a morning breakfast boost. Or it's great to top up any meal to give you energy and nourishment. And it's super quick to make. First, I'll show you the green smoothie or the superfood drink. Um, I'll show a basic kind of recipe and you can add to it or swap them some things about whatever you can get your hands on. So the basic one, now this makes two portions um, of a glass about this size or you know you can have it as one huge portion if you want a very good um, thick drink. So I've got 300 millilitres of water. Now you don't have to use water, you can also use um, almond milk or oat milk uh, if you want to swap it out and have it a little thicker. But um, to thicken mine, I use a banana, which I've got ready here. Just add the rest of this. I told you this recipe was easy. And then to the greens. So you want nutrient dense greens, things like kale, spinach, or that Cavolo Nero stuff. Um, it's really great because they're full of iron and they really help um, our cognitive uh, brain function and that's to do with the, the iron in it. Um, there's also vitamin B12 and that's really good to help boost our immune system. So I've got a large handful of spinach, you can just pop that in and you can do all spinach or mix it up, you can have all three of the different greens. I'm just going to take the stalk part off the tail and then um, some lemon juice which is really good to help break down um, fatty acids in the liver. So I've just done a small uh, amount there, kind of mm, little cup full. Lemon juice and then the important ingredient to the super superfood drink, which is something like this. You want a green um, superfood drink, or you can get it in a pot like that. Now this one is vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free and kosher, and it's got things in it like spirulina, spinach powder, parsley, cor um, corallella powder, um, barley grass root and green tea leaf extract. Basically this stuff is really amazing. It cleanses and purifies your liver and it gives a great boost to your digestive system as well. If you are on any medication, um, whether that be herbal or um, more western medicine, you can check with your doctor or your medical practitioner to see if this would be okay for you. If not, give it a whirl. So I'm just going to do one large scoop 
in there like so. That's all you need. Make sure the lid's on, otherwise I will be all green. And then you just blend it up. Very easy, super simple. Smells great, very fresh. So there we have the smoothie. The superfood green drink. Mm. That's very good. Okay, so I've cleared my counter down and now we're going to make the energy balls. They're quite amazing. Um, so the basis of them is some oats. So I've got uh, one quarter cup or 160 grams of oats. And you can get gluten free ones if needed. But actually, what I have done is taken a few of the oats out and I've put some coconut in there to top it up. So coconut and oats together is 160 grams or one and a quarter cup in total. Then I have um, half a cup of mixed um, seeds, which is my add-ins. It's flax seeds and um, all sorts of really great nutrient boosting seeds and nuts for our liver. So half a cup is about 64 grams. Then I've got uh, about one and a half teaspoons of ground chia seeds. Now you can either grind them or you can um, soak them overnight. They're easier to digest, but they're really great for you as well. You can add some fruit. So I've gone for some dried mango and chopped it up into pieces. I've gone for a very large handful. I have not weighed this. And you can put any type of dried fruit in there that you prefer. I chose mango because it's an anti-inflammatory, which is really good for your digestive system and it's just going to help your liver very much. The other th main thing, so with the oats, and the uh, liquid um, sweetener, whether that be honey or an, I've gone for an agar of nectar, you also need quite a lot of nut butter, and that can be any type of nut butter um, that we're gonna put in. You need 64 grams or half a cup again of nut butter. So I'll just get that out. Something like, I guess, one and a bit, a huge scoop. Okay, right, I'll put some oil in as well. And then you need a liquid kind of sweetener. So yes, honey, you can put honey or agave or a liquid honey or any type of sweetener like that. A third of a cup, which is quite a lot actually, or that's also or grams, 43 grams. So something like this. I'm just going to pour that in. So that's just going to help stick everything together and make it a bit sweeter with all those nuts. Um, oats, a nut butter and a liquid sweetener are the three main things that you need and then you can add whatever you like to it. So as well as these wonderful seeds, I am going to put in a teaspoon of turmeric. It's amazing. It's an anti-inflammatory, an antioxidant, and it has um, an anti-cancer properties, and it helps reduce liver fat content. So that's all of those things in there. Um, the last thing I'm going to put in is this other superfood mix. It's 
really great it's got b vitamin in and it helps your mind and your emotions adapt to daily stress and strain anyway it has ashwagandha blueberry cocoa and maca also yeah this one is dairy free gluten free and kosher as well and i'm just going to put one huge scoop of that in too and then we want to mix it all together and then put it in the fridge for half an hour. So all of these extra things I've put, if you just want a simple um, energy ball, you don't have to put fruit or fancy seeds. You can even do chocolate. That's really good for you as well. I'll put cocoa in with that mix. So mix it all together. If it feels too dry, add some more liquid sweetener, whether that be honey or um, some sort of pouring uh, sugar. And if it's too wet, add some more oats. So I am going to add a little bit more of this, kind of by eye. You, you'll get the feel for it. Great. I'm going to go and put that in the fridge, leave it for half an hour, and then we'll come back to rolling them into some balls. So I've got it out the fridge and it's a much firmer now. And basically what I've started to do is just to get a small amount, squish it together and turn it into a ball. And just for finishing touches, I've got some coconut that I'm just gently rolling it in, sprinkling on the top. You don't have to do this, you can, or you could roll it in um, some of that green powder of the superfood instead. There we are. And the other joy is that you can keep them in the fridge for two weeks, or you can freeze them for up to three months and get them out whenever you want a quick energy boosting, liver cleansing snack. There we are. And there we have it some lovely energy um, balls for the spring and a super green drink. I do remember that I mentioned last time uh, about my pokey rabbit. Give me one second. And here he is making a star appearance, Pokey the rabbit. And he says, have a lovely spring. How about that? The second edition of Cat Kitchen. Wasn't that absolutely great? And look what I've got, a free sample. So I can just let you know exactly how amazing these energy balls are. Mmm, coconutty. Mmm, mmm. Okay. <laughs> absolutely wonderful, isn't she? She produced that entirely on her own with her iPhone. Absolutely incredible. Well done, Cat. Fantastic. Okay, so next week we're going to... Start off with a journey down the gallbladder channel. And you know that ever since the pandemic, we've been doing all of this stuff for free. We know a lot of you have got a lot of problems. That's absolutely fine, it's for you. If you can afford to donate, we would really appreciate that. Even a small amount really helps us because we're not out of it yet. We're still just working from month to month. We really need some uh, help. If you can afford to donate, it'd be great. There's a donate link on every email. It'd be really good. We could really do with some help. Um, so we can keep this going. And we're coming up for our year's anniversary. Really great. So before we finish up, um, I'm just going to see how, you, how you're feeling after uh, the last hour. I'm just going to see if we've had anyone got a reaction. Are you feeling generally more balanced? About the same or less balanced, let's see if you can vote for us. Okay, if you do have a reaction to the sessions, you feel like things are working out, you can always get one-to-one -one support. We can always, you can just email us, um, maybe book a one-to-one -a -one session. If you're feeling about the same, I just encourage you to get the recording, repeat this, ex repeat this um, cycle of exercises or tweak it for yourself over the next week. Um, and uh, yeah, great. We'll see you next week. Very excited. We're going to go down the entire gallbladder channel. It's a really powerful channel and it's really good for 
clearing the head and dealing with any frustration and anxieties or frustration and decision making and things like that. So there she is. Thanks so much, Kat. That was a, that was a great production. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you liked it. It's always <laughs> I'm glad, but always funny watching yourself. It's always it's funny watching <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. It was absolutely brilliant. <clears throat> okay. Okay, goodbye everyone. Thanks, Kat. Thanks for the Cat's Kitchen feature. See you next week for the gallbladder. I'll put it up. I'll put it on YouTube, um, on the center's YouTube link oh, with the ingredients underneath. With the recipe underneath yes. there. Yeah, great. So you can check in. Yes. Okay, see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.